Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is doing great. I know the markets, well, the stock market's not looking uh, too hot lately, but maybe there's good news with the crypto markets, mostly with Bitcoin. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, Gensler and his uh, hench people at the SEC will finally get around to approving at least one or more uh, Bitcoin spot ETFs. I mean, they've already approved a whole bunch of like these futures products, which I'm not even going to touch. But I want to see how potentially what that could do to Coinbase and the Coin and Coney, uh, the Yieldmax ETF. So uh, my guess is that crypto purists won't like these crypto spot ETFs. Because uh, the whole thing with crypto is that if it's not your keys, it's not your crypto. I can understand that. I personally, myself, um, like to have some crypto in uh, in a non-custodial uh, account. Uh, I won't talk too much about it because I don't like talking about like personal uh, like crypto stuff. But I think for for normal people, everyday people, that that prefer like more stocks, more ETFs. It, I think for most people, it's easier to trade that way. So I think overall, the Bitcoin spot ETFs are a good thing. Let's just take uh, the State Street, um, the GLD example. So this is the the most, well, one of the most popular ETFs for trading gold. Um, as you can see, like if like the for the total shares outstanding, you know, there's 241 million out there, so. That that's a good, maybe like a good uh, benchmark for how the Bitcoin spot ETF might perform. It might even do better. Um, I'm hoping like more sort of like the millennials and Zoomers will kind of gravitate towards this product, and even maybe even like Gen X and and Boomers that that you know they haven't gotten their feet wet uh, with crypto because they were afraid of like you know uh, I don't know I guess like locking up their the crypto somewhere and they can't access it. But with, I guess like with the normal brokerage that that could help allay some of those fears. Um, and then there's just a recent uh, screenshot of the trading volume. So they traded 12.7 million uh, shares. So I think that's a pretty good, good, pretty good proxy. So imagine what BlackRock and their, their iShares products could do. So in a previous life, I've, traded SLV, which is their silver ETF, and then also IWM, which is over here, like towards the bottom, the Russell 2000. So these are like their, the small cap stocks. I think th these two are probably two of the more popular uh, ETFs in terms of trading volume. Uh, I know they also have like uh, this bond ETF, the AGG, uh, that that used to trade more, but, but still, like, BlackRock is a pretty, pretty big behemoth, and they're not going anywhere soon. So the fact that they're, you know, they've applied for a uh, Bitcoin ETF is a pretty big deal, and that that's also like helped spur other uh, companies to kind of jump in as well to grab a piece of the share. So in the past, I've traded uh, Vanek uh, and Wisdom Tree products. I know Fidelity is a pretty big name in terms of uh, mutual funds. I've traded a few of like Global X as well. Um, I have some money stuck in a, uh, a a grayscale like their Bitcoin, like their trust, and they're also hopefully uh, be able to to convert like their the, whatever the product is, the GPTC product, into like a normal ETF, and that could help unlock um, some more value. And the reason I, why I like BlackRock in, in particular, uh, their ETFs, most of their ETFs also have options. And that could be a really good thing for, for option traders as well. So the more liquidity there is, I think it's it's good for like the entire space in, in general. And then there's, don't, also, don't also forget that there's also uh, Ethereum ETFs that are kind of like in the pipeline. So once the Bitcoin ETFs get approved, I'm hoping the ET, uh, uh, maybe some of the other uh, major altcoins alt will will join in as well. So those these are just my thoughts. Like I'm not like an expert in the space, uh, either in ETF, 
ETFs or with crypto. I, I'm just a big, um, I guess, how, how would you say, not a cheerleader, but like sort of like a fan or at least like a supporter. Because I think like crypto in general could be a, I don't, I don't like to say game changer because I think that's overused, but I think it's it's part of the future. I think um, if everything goes right, uh, crypto should have a, the crypto companies in general should have a pretty bright future ahead of itself. Now, here's the thing with Coinbase itself, the, the just like the actual stock. I think in the short run, it'll get a good pop. Maybe it'll even retest like their IPO highs uh, if everything goes well. But then after that, I think in the long run, they, they might run into problems. So I think we, um, optimistically, we might have like a few years of like just like nice, nice uh, capital appreciation. But my own personal experience with Coinbase, like the actual exchange itself, uh, just because they're pretty much the only game in town for, for most people, like the the customer service to me isn't that great. But at least like for myself, nothing horrible has happened. Like I haven't gotten hacked, you know, crossing my fingers that, and I hope I never do. And I hope you guys never do also. I And I think these uh, the new sp- Bitcoin spot ETF, they'll probably wind up taking uh, market share away from from Coinbase over time, and especially if they start doing more. Uh, let's say, for example, like ETH, Ethereum ETF, uh, a Solana ETF, uh, you know, whatever your favorite altcoin ETF. You know, as long as there's a demand for it, I think uh, these big institutions will. You know, they're they're not a charity. They're they obviously want to make money off of you guys, so. But, you know, the trade-off is that, that you get, like, convenience. Like, you just trade it out of your stock account rather than managing, like, your own, like, cold storage and, and, and hot wallets and cold wallets and all that kind of stuff. So there is there is some convenience here. Um, and then, like, as I mentioned earlier, like, the ETFs could offer a chance to, to get even more yield rather than just hodling. Because, like, once options come out on these, these ETFs, like... It's gonna be a good source of um, uh, a premium that could be available. So I think like Coney could be okay too for at least maybe another year or so. It it really depends on how these Bitcoin spot ETFs like the performance, like because you'll you'll get a bunch of volatility and that translate into option premium and that translates into uh, dividends for Coney holders. But then after that, uh, you know they're the Coney might crap out, and then at that point, like I might migrate to like other options, but no pun intended. And then who's to say like uh, yield max and and defiance or any of these new uh, high yield ETS companies? They might start saying, "Hey, maybe we can do a a Bitcoin spot ETF covered call or a cash secured product." And hey, th- you know, if that happens, I'm gonna be all over it, and I'm gonna you know bring that to you guys as well but you know i want to temper expectations here please don't bet too big on, on these upcoming bitcoin spot etfs i'm taking a a, a cautious uh, stance on this as well like i'll probably start with like maybe something small maybe like 100 shares depending on how uh expensive these these etfs uh, are going to be in terms of a uh, share price so I think Coinbase might still be okay for all coins and stable coins. So so the, their USDC product is pretty decent. Uh, uh, right now they're paying five percent on USDC. So uh, maybe if you want an alternative to Treasuries, uh, maybe uh, that's something you guys can look into as well. And then kind of like the bad side is like that Coinbase. I've heard a lot of and I've read a lot of uh, horror stories like they're prone to hacking, phishing attempts. Like you know, like fake emails and all that kind of stuff, and then hopefully the government, well, the the U.S. government doesn't like. I feel like every other day they're 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 trying to badmouth Coinbase. Uh, I don't know why, but it's just an, another nuisance. Um, and the rules keep changing, so I hope they, you know, I I hope as as bad as they are sometimes with customer service, I don't think they deserve to be kicked out of the country. And that's why um, I'm hoping that that cooler heads will prevail. And then the the they have a kind of annoyed 
the Chongdunwen community, and I'm hoping maybe like as as the as the crypto markets get better, like people will start coming back. And then of of course none of this is financial tax advice. Um, and then I guess like technically this could be like a sort of decentralized finance. Like we're sort of like in this gray area, but in neither event there's no refunds here. So you know you guys always gotta uh, watch out for yourself by by practicing like good position sizing. Um, and I think like just overall like brokerage accounts will probably be more convenient for most people. So I think. Overall, the Bitcoin spot ETFs could be a, a, a short-term positive for Coinbase and Kony. But in the long run, I guess, is, you know, once they get more popular and they take more uh, market share away, uh, it could be bad for Kony and Coinbase. But then by then, like, hopefully there'll be other ETFs, um, like high-yield ETFs that, that take advantage of, like, the, the crypto space. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, uh, hopefully you can like and subscribe, uh, comment, share, all that kind of good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care now.